All right, we are on problem number 17. Now I think my pen is too thick. There you go. We were on problem 17, and I think I did a good job of confusing you at the end of the last video. So I'm going to, to some degree, start from scratch. So I've uh, left what I drew last time, where you know we had this graph that they did on, on problem 17. And they said that this is the graph of y equals f of x. And they said, which of the following could be used to get the graph of y is equal to f of x plus 2? So they want us to graph, essentially, y is equal to f of x plus 2. And just so we don't get confused with the y's and stuff, I'm going to define a new function called g of x. Hopefully this will not confuse you and just simplify something. And I'll, I'll call g of x is equal to f of x plus 2. And I did that because I didn't want two y's here. Um, I want you to realize that this is a different function than you know, these aren't the same function or the same y. So we're, I'm going to define a, a new function called g of x is equal to f of x plus 2. So first, let's just write a little table and that maybe we can understand a little bit about f of x. So when I had f of x, we know a couple of things. When x is 0, f of x is 1. When x is 1, right, f of x is 0. We know that, right? So let's do another table for g of x. So g of x. So let's do x, g of x. So now, let's let's think about it in a, in a slightly um, different, almost in a reverse way. We know we know a couple of values. We know what we know what f of zero is, right? We know f of zero, and we know f of one, right? We got, we're given right here. We know f of zero is equal to is equal to 1, and we know f of 1 is equal to 0. Now what value do I have to stick into g of x for x to get f of 0? Well, I said g of x is equal to f of x plus 2, right? g of x is equal to f of x plus 2. So to get f of 0, I need to put a negative 2 in here. I need to put a negative 2 in here, right? g of negative 2 is equal to f of minus 2 plus 2, which equals f of 0. Right? So this is g of minus 2 is the same thing as f of 0. And so x is just minus 2. So when x is minus 2, g of x is equal to 1. Right? x is minus 2, g of minus 2 is the same thing as f of 0, because you get the minus 2 plus 2, and that equals 1. So there we go. g of minus 2 is equal to 1. Then what value do I have to give, put into g to get f of 1? So what do I have to put here for this expression right here to be equal to 1? Well, it has to equal negative 1. g of minus 1. g of negative 1, if you put negative 1 into g, you get negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. That's the same thing as f of 1, so that equals 0. So when x is at negative 1, g of negative 1 is 0. So let's draw g. Let's draw g. When x is equal to 2, I'll draw it in a, well, I'll draw it in this slightly, in this color. When x is negative 2, so this is negative 2. We have g of x is equal to 1. So this is this right here is a point. So this is at negative 2, 0. And then we also have the point negative 1, comma 0. So we also have this point negative 1, comma 0. Negative 1, comma 0 is that point. And so what we see what happened is, is that g of x is actually a shift to the left by 2. And if you if you remember, so g of x is going to look something like this. It's going to look like the other graph just shifted to the left, right? Essentially, we just took the other graph and we shifted it to the left. And we 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 didn't do it with all of the points. We could have done it with more points, but we did it with the two points that we know definitely are defined for f of x, right? And and those two points definitely were shifted to the left. And if you didn't, you know, this is actually a little bit complicated. And a very simple way of thinking about this problem is, in general, if I have f of x, then f of x plus anything, you know, f of x plus 2, in, in this case, is going to be the same graph of f of x, except I'm shifting it to the left. And it's a little un unintuitive that I'm adding 2, but I'm shifting to the left. And the intuition behind that is, well, before f you know wherever whatever value f of 0 was now 
that's going to happen when I put a negative 2 in. right? So that's the intuition why you're shifting to the left. The old 0 is now the new negative 2. right? Similarly, f of x minus 2, that shifts a graph. So f of x minus 2, if I wanted to draw that, would look something like this. It would like go like this, and it would come down, and it would go like this. So that would be shifting to the right by 2. And shifting up and down is actually much easier. Shifting, if we have f, and f of x and if we want to shift it up, say by 2, then we'd have f of x plus 2. We would just change the y-intercept. Or if we wanted to shift it down, we'd have f of x minus 2. Hopefully I didn't confuse you with all of this jargon. I mean, the, the easy way to think about it is really just what I told you, you know, this rule. But I don't want you to just have the rule. I want you to hopefully have a little bit of intuition on, on how the shifting works. Let's move on to the next problem. Oh, I didn't tell you which choice that was. Well, if you just shift it to the left too, it looks like choice number C. All right, we're at number 18. 18, and they have this figure. Looks something, just a triangle. Looks like that, and then within that, there's another triangle. like that. And then we have A, B, C, D, E, F. It says, in the figure above, AB is equal to BC. So AB, so this big triangle, and I'll, I'll draw it, maybe I'll draw it in the C, I'll draw it this color. So this this side. AB is equal to BC. So th that's, those sides are equal. And what does that immediately tell us? If we have two, angle, two sides are equal, th th that means that the base angles are equal. That means that this angle is going to be equal to this angle. What else do we know? And DE is equal to EF is equal to DF. So we also know, I'll switch colors, that DE is equal to EF is equal to DF. And that immediately tells us this is a 60, 60, or this is an equilateral triangle. All the sides are the same, so all the angles have to be the same. So this angle has to be equal to this angle, which has to be equal to this angle, and they're all going to be 60 degrees. They're all going to be equal to 60 degrees. Okay. Now, what else are they telling us? If the measure of angle ABC, so ABC, so this angle, is 30 degrees, that's what they're telling us. And the measure of B, of what do they say? BDE. So BDE is 50 degrees. So this is 50 degrees. They want to know what DFA is. So DFA. So we want to figure out this angle right here. So this is the angle game again. So a couple of things. If this angle up here is 30, what are these base angles going to be? Well, they're going to have to add up. All of them combined add up to 180, right? So that means that these two are going to add up to 150, because you know 180 minus 30, and they're the same. So if they're the same and they add up to 150, they're both going to have to be 75 degrees. So that's 75 degrees, and that is 75 degrees, right? And then what else do we know? Well, we know if if this angle is 50, if this angle is 60, what is this angle right here going to be? Well, these three angles are going to have to add up to 180 as well, right? So 180 minus 50 is 130 minus 60 is 70. So this angle is 70 degrees. And now I could blow up. You know, if I were to draw this a little bit bigger, it looks something like this. This is A. This is D. This is F. I'm just drawing this triangle right here. And so this is 75. This is 70. And so what's this? Well, 180 minus 70 minus 75 is what? That's 180 minus 180 minus 145. And so that should be 35 degrees. And that is choice B. I will see you in the next video. And the important thing to realize, this is just the angle game, which I've made videos on. And you just have to keep kind of saying, oh, the angles in a triangle add up to 180, or the, you know, they're supplementary, so they add up to 180. Or you just have to remember that if the sides are equal, then the base angles are equal. And then you can figure them out, because you know what the third angle is.